Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here, and I'm here with Stig Siebertson, and really excited about this. Uh, we connected at an event a little while back, and you saw the picture, so not really my brother, but kind of, I think, I feel like it. <laughs> a brother from another mother. <laughs> brother from another mother, on the, on the same path and trying to spread a lot of good things. So I really wanted to, to share Stig with you all to talk about just how important breath is to your nervous system, how that affects your adrenals and your thyroid, and how simply we can adjust that in a matter of seconds with some conscious techniques. So this is a blast. Do you want to just fire away and give us some context here? Absolutely. But just before we really dive in, so to speak, um, you know, you are kind of a brother from another mother. We have met many years ago. We have stayed in touch and we have this, you know, friendly relationship but but the reason i really liked you from the get-go was because you really look like my brother who's by the way also a leading head surgeon and and a wonderful fella but you really do lot uh, you do look very similar so so I, even when i sent you the pictures uh, many years yeah. ago you were i think your wife was like whoa <laughs> It was, it was true. It's uncanny. <laughs> so, you know, when you hear that, somebody looks like you're like, nah, but anyway. So, yes, you, you look a lot like my brother. You have the same sweet energy and you're the smart guy and you want to help the world. So, so thank you for that, Alan. You know, one more thing I should have said, too, uh, if you've not read the copy that I had as well, Stig is the holder for the world record for breath holding. And pretty incredible thing. I was just telling my son about this and I said, so, so how long do you think that would be? He's like, I don't know, seven minutes, 10 minutes. I said, yeah, you're way, you're not even close. It's 20, 22 minutes. So, yeah. wow. If anyone understands how to control and modulate your breath and make sense of it, this is going to be the guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, so let's dive into the, 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 the breathing, right? We can all do amazing things. When I did that record, actually, on, on the Superhuman count, uh, Showdown on Discovery Channel, they crowned me as the ultimate superhuman. I did not come up with that title. They gave me that. <laughs> That's fine. And it was an official Guinness World Record. And I've done mm -hmm. some other records uh, after that. But people can look on, on YouTube or something. I dive under ice and other stuff in Speedos. Maybe people have seen it on a <laughs> uh, uh, History Channel or 60 Minutes or something. But anyways, the important thing is to, to tell people, you know, I'm not superhuman. I really don't consider myself superhuman. We all have this amazing frame, right? We have this incredible body and we can all use it much better than we are taught in school and that, you know, that society tells us about. And I think we all have superhuman uh, capabilities. The, 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 you know, the question is, how do we reach them? How do we unleash that potential? And that's what I'm so fascinated about, going in a path of breathing. Because in my world, you know, I have to hold my breath. So people out there, if they don't have a clue what I, I do, I, I'm what's called a free diver, a breath hold diver. I'm a four times free diving world champion. So I've been mm -hmm. doing this all my life. I have the world record in deepest dive, longest dive, all this ice diving. But it doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter the, the discipline. It's about also the long breath hold, 22 minutes. It's about holding your breath and doing something underwater on a single breath. That's, that's breath hold diving. And never do this alone, by the way can be deadly dangerous. But breath holding is what I also call meditation underwater. Hmm. So when you go underwater, not only do you come back to that state of being in the womb of your mother, feeling protected. Now I talk about lukewarm water, nice water, not <laughs> the polar, you know, ice. So being in warm water, you know, that is just healing by itself, you know, for illnesses, for depression, stress, anxiety, water on your skin, all the receptors in your face. We have the trigeminal nerve. We have a lot of nerves that respond to that. And um, so water combined with breath holding, what I call meditation underwater, brings out so many qualities in the body. The mind shifts from beta states, the, the brainwave frequency to alpha, making us more playful, more open-minded, literally. And when you scan the brain, uh, I've had all sorts of tests imaginable and unimaginable done on me the last 15 years, scanning the heart, you know, brain, uh, MR, PET, CET, um, ultrasound, the, the, the whole nine yards. And when you look into the brain during breath hold, amazing things happen. You know, that's why we have this meditation going on. The brain opens, different centers communicate with each other. And, and you know, the example, I, I'm sure people listening here, all your followers, know the example of, of being in the shower and feeling great and 
having all these ideas, you know. Mm, you don't yeah. get those ideas when you're stressed and in the, so to speak, adrenal system with adrenaline and cramping up. That There is no room in the brain. There is no time for the opening of the brain to really communicate through the neurons and, and, and combining different ideas at the same time and getting a new idea. So that alone is, is interesting from breath holding. But so it was just to explain my background. I know we're going to talk more about breathing. I just wanted to tell people that in breathing is inhaling, right? So we can do that now. Everyone can start inhaling. So base, basic rules, right? Always breathe in with your nose, right? You know, and a fascinating thing to connect the audience to about breathing is that there's many things that our brain does that we do not think about that are completely automatic, like our heart rate. And there's many things that we have to think about and be deliberate about to do. And there's some things that work either way. And breathing yes. is a bridge between the conscious and the unconscious. Because we can be Absolutely. deliberate, but it's also automatic. That's a very good point. And the thing is, we can also control our heart rate. And we might get into that today or maybe in some, some other talk. <laughs> but, um, but people can connect much more deeply with their heart more intimately than they believe. And then the, what they're told. I use that a lot because I have to lower my heart rate very quickly. To, mm save oxygen and, and save, you know, on the me metabolic process. I really need to go into idle and kind of hibernate, right? S shut down all the organs, all inter internal organs, brainwave activity has to change, but not only has to change the frequency, it also has to change the speed. So I have to go into kind of a lullaby, slow motion way of thinking, uh, which is very comfortable. And that lowers the heart rate by itself. So there are many techniques and it lowers the blood pressure. You can lower hypertension just by controlling the mind. But you brought up the most important point that breathing is, is involuntarily, it's, 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 it's unconscious, like the heart rate. But the breathing is much more easy to control because we can just stop talking, then we stop breathing, or we can breathe more. And in fact, people do breathe about 25 to 30,000 times each day. Mm. And this is a vast number. And in that every single breath, you know, that is our life here and now, and we cannot change it. So when we are not learned how to breathe consciously, we just kind of breathe on autopilot. So many times the breath gets ahead of us, meaning we're not controlling the heart rate. We're not controlling the immune system. We're not controlling the adrenals. We're not controlling the nervous system, whether it's the fight or flight or the rest and digest, because we're just kind of, you know, letting everything happen. And as soon as people, so maybe that's lesson number one, just for this racer, the sharp uh, lecture today, you know, lesson number one is exactly what you said with breathing. We do have a choice. We can choose to say, now I want to breathe consciously. I feel stressed. I feel a bit tight. I want to sit down for one minute on my bench or, you know, in the car before a meeting, before a client like you seeing lots of patients. You want to be centered from that earlier patient. You had a big discussion. You had to maybe give some uh, difficult, uh, you, know, um, you know, information to a patient. So you want to center yourself. You want to just, you know, come home. And with breathing, you can do that in a matter of two or three breaths, like taking in the, the breathing with the nose. Taking that slight pause, two or three seconds, very important. And then just with the nose or mouth. That was one breath, Alan, and you feel that difference of yeah. the nervous system, the muscles in the neck, the face getting softer. And the more you do this consciously, you know, one, two minutes a day, the better you become at relaxing incredibly fast. And this is another overlooked thing. So when I do teaching in the breathing and any, my breath system is called breathology. So the method is about breathing more consciously, more, you know, correctly. And um, what I always teach people first is relaxation. You cannot start to breathe or, as a matter of fact, do anything in life well if you don't know the fundamentals of relaxation. And we all know how to stress. We are very good at stressing hmm. from a young age and from demands, from society, exams, growing up, uh, what do you want to become when you get old, getting a job, getting kids, getting fired, getting a divorce. There are so many struggles and challenges in life every day. So we are very natural um, uh, encoded into stress. And that is also why more and more people, unfortunately, succumb to stress and anxiety and fear. And, and eventually it becomes so severe that they can't even hold a job and support the family. So it's a very, very global, um, 
you know, uh, like a pandemic. It, it's a very, very big issue with stress and the adrenal system. So with breathing, we can absolutely reverse that. And that is what I think is the main topic today, you know, that once people realize, wow, I do have a choice, that opens up, you know, a lot of new possibilities. And then people get curious and start to understand how the nose is important for nitrogen oxide, opening the alveoli and the lungs, little flowers, I call them, getting more oxygen basically into the bloodstream, meaning you have more energy, you can be more productive, more creative. If you're an athlete like I am and a lot of the Olympian goal athletes I train around the world, you can perform better simply because you, you run on a higher octane. You know, you have more oxygen, you can boost the hemoglobin, the red blood cells, and you can bind more oxygen. And you can get a higher clearing rate for the lactic acid and a lot of technical stuff I don't want to go into, but you can tune and boost your, your body and that machine to an incredible degree. And that's where the superhuman power comes in. When you learn to uh, tap into those different resources that your body you know, holds for you, you know, a new world opens. And that also uh, um, relates to rehabilitation. And of course, as a doctor, you, know, you work with uh, patients that need advice and help uh, and, and guidance and, and medical treatment at times or, or surgery. But we can heal or at least uh, speed up the healing process and the recovery. Uh, and, and we can also prevent a lot of illnesses from being aware of how our body is, is uh, affecting us, both how the body is affecting the mind mm -hmm. and how the mind is affecting the spirit and the body, right? How they're all, all three things working together. So <laughs> the breathing is the key to life, in my opinion. You know, with breathing, we, we hold the, the, the secret key to all those elements. And you've got a really thorough training going on, but you had a, a quick pointer for us. There's a little example you could give us today to help out with just boosting our energy for those that may have adrenal dysregulation. Yeah, well, I think we, one exercise that is so powerful, even though it's simple, that people should never confuse simplicity with uh, efficiency. Uh, you know, it can be simple yet highly efficient. Um, and one exercise I love to teach people is the one-two breathing. Okay. So ratio of one to two, uh, and anybody can do this. And when you use the nose, you are much more prone to do what's called diaphragmatic breathing, so belly breathing, meaning that you engage the full uh, capacity of the lung because the diaphragm sinks down because the airflow is slower through your nostrils. They're smaller mm -hmm. than the mouth. Many people are mouth breathers, uh, which is very strenuous on the heart. You can, all, you can put your hand on your chest and try to breathe with your mouth, and people can do that with it. You dry out immediately in the throat, right? Mm -hmm. You almost need a glass of water immediately. Actually, I do have one here from the Olympics. I was coaching there for a full uh, month. <laughs> so you dry out in the throat. Imagine like you being a doctor or a public speaker having to engage with people and you don't know that you're a mouth breather. It's a huge problem and mm -hmm. it fatigues you. But also as a, as a doctor speaking with clients, you affect people in your presence, right? You're, the way you breathe does not only mm -hmm. affect the way you feel, it affects the way your surroundings are reacting to you mm -hmm. consciously and subconsciously. The same mm -hmm. with animals they have a, and children. They have a very strong intuition and that comes from the subconscious mind, from body language. They don't like to be around a guy like this. Right. They like to be around a guy like this that's smiling, relaxing the shoulders, opening the face, right? So the breathing has so many powerful messages. Um, but let's do this exercise now. So it's one to breathing, meaning the ratio is one to two. So the inhale is, for example, five seconds, then the exhale is 10. And maybe we should also just because we want to give your people a little bit extra uh, advice, explain that breathing should be done on a count of four or okay. rather like a square. The key signal to stress is no pause in the breathing. This is so important to understand because then people can start to look at themselves. They can look at their children, their spouse, their colleagues at work. And when you have people breathing with no pause, they are stressed, meaning mm. that the adrenal system and the cortisol, everything is firing. And I can give you a few examples, right? Trying. <laughs> no pause, right? Sure. Uncontrolled. The mind also loses control. See? It's connected. Anxiety. Mind also losing, you know, just going into fight and flight. A fear. The same. Anger. I didn't do that. And if you tell me again, I'm going to do something horrible. There's no <laughs> When you reverse that, I understand you. 
there's a pause. I see your point. Well, you, in the you past, know, you reverse the whole thing. The dialogue changes, and your mind is more, you know, open to receiving, and the, the people in front of you receive in a much stronger way. So, so should we? Yeah, ask your question, and then we do this. Yeah, one quick point along those lines. It's so fascinating from brain science. There's certain ways that we respond when we're in a state of stress or in a state of relaxation, just automatically. Our our brain is stressed, and we do things differently in how we're breathing. But the yes. fascinating part is we can hijack that. You know, we can intentionally shift our breathing and then our brain, yes. oh, I guess we're not stressed anymore. And now and you, know what's, again. you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? That nobody's talking about this. <laughs> it's free. It's available 24-7. Yeah. It's here. Yet we're not taught in school or at sports. I, I train the best athletes, Olympian gold winning athletes. I'm also, you know, world champion for many years, and I train also the Danish national team. I know we won the world championship. I'm just trying to say that we're at the top of the elite level of sports. And I train tennis players. I train many, many people, you know, names that people out here would know. Yet these people don't know how to breathe because <laughs> they focus on diet and on weightlifting, on sprinting, on technique in their specific sport, but they have never been told about breathing or breath exercises. Wow. Let, alone, let alone breath holding that can do a whole lot of things, boosting your immune system, boosting the red blood cells, meaning your hematomatic, uh, hematocritic value. So you get more oxygen because you have more red blood cells per volume. So you become stronger, basically, you become more energetic. But they've never heard about that because it's not really, it's not out there. And to be frank, you know, I have a PhD in medicine and I have a background in biology as well. So I'm not angry with doctors, but there is not much in, me in the medical school talking about breathing. Oh, goodness, no. Helping. That is why it's so wonderful. You're, you're, you're not putting your face and, and, and putting that uh, pole down and saying, you know, I'm putting my stakes here. We need to, to tell people about the power of breathing. Mm -hmm. So let's do this exercise with your audience, right? Because it takes one, one minute. So you inhale, as I said, breathing should be divided into four. An inhale, a pause. That's where we got derailed. So when there's no pause, you're stressed. If there's a pause, everything's okay. So there's a slight pause, and I mean a natural pause. Listen to your body. doesn't matter if it's two or three or four seconds. You will feel the pause, right? And that is also breath meditation. When you get more in tune with yourself, your body will tell you how much you should pause. Then you exhale, and people can exhale with the mouth or the nose. That's fine. Up to them. It's easy to control the exhale. Then there's a pause again. That's it. And then you inhale. So four different steps, like a, like a square, like a box. So okay. let's try that. And then people, all of you, <laughs> lovely people <laughs> out there listening and, and doing this with us, really maybe even try to close your eyes now because we're going inside on a journey on the body, uh, body side. So we're going inside and from the body, we're going to control the mind. So we are hijacking in Alan Christensen's terms. We're hijacking <laughs> this, this system here. So you inhale. Slowly and controlled, you relax your shoulders, you relax your face, you hold that pause for about two or three seconds, and when your body's ready, you release. And that was about double the exhale. Then you hold that pause, and then your body tells you to inhale slowly, controlled. You hold that pause again for two or three seconds, just a slight beautiful pause, and then you just easily exhale. And it feels so calming. And there's a pause again, and the last time we do the inhale at our own pace. We even put a smile on our face now, and then we just hold that pause, and then we let go completely. It's just a relaxed exhale, totally relaxed and a slight pause of two seconds, and we're done. So this was a count, uh, that was three breaths, right, in a cycle. I would guess it took about one minute. Imagine if people started doing this at work before they go to lunch, if they're here with emails, you know, just took that minute before a meeting, a board meeting, before yelling at the kids, before, you know, going into <laughs> the No, seriously, that, you know, that's when you need it the most. It's when you say you don't have the time. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have time for that. No, that's probably because you need to take the time. Like, no, people say, oh, I don't have time for that. I say, do you, you know, oh, so you don't have time to be healthy? I'm certainly sure you don't have time to be ill. 
I just got to say, uh, before doing that exercise, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm feeling good. It's a good day. So there's nothing negative taking place. But just in those few seconds, I felt this dramatic positive shift. It was just that much further the right direction. And I would say anyone yeah. else who tried this, I'm sure they experienced the same thing. I, I hope people feel the same. And the, the thing about this is, you know, of course, there are all these levels and I train a whole system in this. But just starting to doing this without knowing anything, you can't go wrong. And you start to listen to your body and you start to understand how the lungs expand and, and what is the rhythm, you know, how's that wave rolling up the yogic breathing, you know, full breathing. And how's that affecting your blood pressure? How is that activating your lymphatic system, which is so important in the immune response as well. So all these fluids in the body that actually also come from the brain, or at least they're connected with the brain. The zero, uh, what, the, the zero gross, the, what is it called in Amer the English? What's Zero, that? The, the, the fluid in the brain? Oh, the cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid, yeah. It runs from like salt water, we can call it. It's a little it's bit different. You can, call it, you can call it CSF for short. That's an easy That's answer. what they call it, yeah. yeah. I was just not sure for the American word, but yes. Yeah, so, so that actually flows out from the brain into our brain uh, stem and then into the spinal cord. So what I'm just trying to explain here without <laughs> getting all the words right, is that everything in the body is connected. Even the brain and the water, the liquids, the fluids in the brain exchange. And that is also oxygen and minerals and, and nutrients, right? Uh, and, and positive and, and negative ions and charges. But the brain is much more strongly connected to the body and the fluids than people think. So with breathing, because breathing moves the fluid, when we run, we really move the fluids and we get a, a higher return. That's why the pulse goes up. So the, the vena cava, the, the, the big uh, vein or vein that, that brings all the blood back to the heart from the legs, basically, you know, everything gets opened and we are massaging the, the blood vessels. So we're keeping that flexibility. That's why sport is healthy. Of course, it also gets a little ticker in shape. So <laughs> with breathing, you know, with the diaphragm moving down, massaging those inner organs, up, uh, taking up more nutrients, meaning that you can uh, lose weight faster. And you can actually eat less and still get the same amount of nutrients because you're extracting everything uh, in, your, in, your, uh, in the food you're eating, in the, in the nourishment. And that's the same with one of the uh, uh, old um, advice in pranayam yoga. So the breath yoga and the energy yoga is actually chewing very slowly in each side of the mouth because once we start chewing, all the enzymes start to break down the fluid, uh, the, the food, and it starts uh, to actually break down and uptake the nutrients also under the tongue and in the, in the mucous membrane uh, in, in the mouth already, you know. So, so there are so many ways to optimize how we take up energy and nutrients from our surroundings. And of course, with breathing, that is the number one because about 70% of our energy, however you want to calculate, that comes from breathing, from oxygen. That is about 20, 21%, 20.9, uh, 20.9, 20 one percent how much how much you want to say it correctly but about 20 percent is oxygen in the air we breathe and the oxygen converts into energy uh in the atp system the the battery system in the mitochondria the, uh, yeah so it breaks down and on all this process to adp but that doesn't matter the energy system is there in every single cell and we have about 30 trillion cells and they all need oxygen and of course if you're not moving and if you're not breathing correctly it's harder for the, for the blood to push around in your entire body. And that's why you feel fatigued and tired. Maybe you should end this uh, wonderful discussion by explaining briefly the two parts of the nervous system and, and how breathing Please. is important. Yeah. Breathing is the key to deciding which system you're in. Because when you're in the stress system, we talked about it briefly, adrenaline, cortisol, so breaking down the body, uh, stressing you, it's a fight and flight system. It, it's a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm dilate the blood pressure goes up because you have to fight the dragon or the lion or whatever the dinosaur that's whoo, coming oh by the way that's in greenland but i have a wetsuit on here i'm not in the speedo but that's from greenland oh, i see the, the ice iceberg in the background oh yeah yeah it's uh it was beautiful beautiful we did that for the Scory channel i had a, a a program up there called the man who doesn't breathe they made a one hour uh, documentary national geographic did on uh, on this program in the u.s so people can just google it breathology they can find it on youtube i'm sure you have only clever people on, on this program. Um, but no, so when you're in the fight and flight, you know, you're really there to survive for a, f a few seconds, basically, right? Avoiding danger, uh, jumping off the side of the road if the bus is coming, uh, you know, towards you. 
But we cannot stay in the system for five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, one week, one month. We will burn out. It, it is so it's just stressful and it breaks down everything in your body. And the thing is, when you're in the, in the stressful system, there is no room for beautiful thoughts or being compassionate, mm-hmm. uh, being uh, creative, uh, being kind, gentle, also to yourself. You don't have time. That's when you go, no, shouldn't you do some breathing? No, I don't have time for that now. What, what is that? Mm-hmm. What is that, Frank? I don't have time for that stuff. Can you see I'm working on my emails? I have more <laughs> stuff to do. Uh, you know, so that is why people get stroke and why, you know, that there is such a teardown on the brain and, and it shoots damage on the neurons. But the good news is we can completely reverse that consciously, as we talked about in the beginning of this wonderful discussion, we can make a, a, a decision and say, I want to move into the rest and digest, into the relaxed system, dopamine, serotonin, the, the happy hormones, as I call them, the feel good hormones, right? oxytocin, the hugging hormone, and the mothers have that before childbirth, all those hormones, they come like sprinkling from a fountain, you know, of happiness when we breathe slowly. And the, the slow exhale, actually, it, it, it sounds simple, you know, but it does a lot of things. The slow exhale uh, triggers the vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve in our body. We have 12 in all, and they're all paired. So running in each side of the body, and they run down that channel in the spine where all that fluid is and and it goes out, you know, little roots from the brain, uh, from the from the vertebras. And um, the tenth cranial nerve is the vagus nerve. It means the wandering nerve. It's three feet long, and it springs out here from the back of our, our brain here. And it actually is the control center for breathing. And right next to that is the control center for the heart rate. And I can actually maybe show here a little bit if I come up here. But the vagus nerve comes down here in each side, of course, and it goes into our lungs and there are a lot of threats going into our lungs. And then there are threats going into our heart. And then even into, well, I could even be a little bit naughty here, but all our internal organs, spleen, kidney, uh, liver, everything is connected through the vagus nerve, which is one of the main branches of the rest and digest system. It's called parasympathetic, but let's not make it too medical here. The, the The relaxed system and that big, wonderful vagus nerve we can trigger by slow exhale. And you know what? We can also yawn. Mm. And that is a slow exhale. So our body knows when we need to relax or the yawning often happens after a long, hard day or after we accomplish something, meaning the stress level went down. We we made it on the bus. (gasps) Oh, my goodness, I made it. Thank you. And, or, on, you know, we fly a lot. I know you travel a lot as I do. So traveling, you get on that flight, you're like, oh my gosh, I thought I was going to miss the plane. And then you go, ah, oh, and you mm-hmm. have a sigh, either, either a sigh or a yawn, like, oh, I did it, right? And that is the body's way of telling you, relax the jaw, open the throat, trigger that vagus nerve. Mm-hmm. You know, when you yawn or when you sigh, you, you take a full breath. So the body is so clever. We just have to listen. To it. Yeah. This is awesome stuff, Stig. I really, really appreciate your time. And everyone, no, I appreciate you coming so up with so short notice. That is, that's admirable. <laughs> yeah, please try these out and take a look at Stig. He's got a great event going on right now that I'm going to be watching and I'd love everyone to check out too. And yeah, we're eager to see more of you. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you so much, uh, Alan, for doing this. And uh, we talk soon. Oh, that's great. Yeah. See you. We know who they are. Maybe you don't, but stay tuned.